Roberts with DMAI's Empowerment, and thank you for joining us for another segment of Empowering Webinars for Planners, and we're excited today to have some special guests as our topic is High-Speed Internet Access, What You Need to Know When Free Is Not an Option. And I think if you can tell by the title, I'm not going to be the um, subject matter expert here. So I'd like to first just start with a few little housekeeping announcements and, and begin by thanking ePro um, Meeting Apps, um, powered by ePro Direct, who is our sponsor of our monthly webinars. And uh, Craig Deal will be joining us today, and uh, we will welcome him and let him say a few things and hello at the end of the webinar. Now, we are going to adhere to our 30-minute time frame today. Um, however, uh, we will take time since our uh, discussion today is fairly technical and we anticipate that you may have a lot of questions. So we will take an opportunity at the end to answer your questions. So if you think of them and would like to type them in the question box during the webinar, uh, we'll certainly hold them for the end. Or if you would like to wait uh, to see if your question gets answered and then begin to ask questions at the end, that also works as well. So I'd like to take this opportunity to um, introduce you to our, ex to our esteemed guest and panelist today. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to Marianne Bobrow. Marianne is, um, as you can uh, tell when we begin here in just a minute, um, a, a really knowledgeable industry expert. She is the president and owner of her company, which is an association and meeting management company. Her firm manages not-for-profit associations as well as produces meetings, trade shows, and events for both nonprofit and the profit sector. She's joined also by Michael Owen, who is the CEO and managing partner of Event Genuity. And I love I love your company name, Michael. And I you know, Michael always says there's no business that's not show business, and that's so true for all of us in the hospitality industry. But show business is no place for the faint of heart, which I'm sure we all agree with. And he has decades of experiences um, as a provider of entertainment services, and he has wealth of knowledge gained through his career in this really unique and often mystifying uh, industry segment. And his company produces business events through North, throughout North America and uh, provides event production, corporate entertainment, and destination meetings management capabilities to both his corporate and his association clients. And last but so certainly not least is John Rissey. And John is responsible for PSAV's event technology operations for the western half of the United States. And he is also responsible for the international operations for their client network services. Um, the HSIA team. So John's responsibility is for over 300 hotels under contract with PSAV and uh, 10 branches, offices, and uh, HSAI operations in over 400 hotels and uh, in the U.S. and international. So as you can see, we're well equipped um, with a great esteemed panel. Um, all of these fine Folks are active members and volunteers for multiple industry associations, and most recently, their work with CIC, Convention Industry Council, has accumulated with the APEX standard review practices of HSAI. So HFIA, I'm sorry, I got your acronym uh, backwards there, um, everyone. So good morning, Marianne, Michael, and John. How are you all today? Good morning. Great. Doing great. Thanks All right. so much, Jerry. Oh, it's great to have you. And uh, this is a topic I know that um, a lot of people were eager to learn more about. So with that, Marianne, I will turn it over to you, Michael, and John to um, get started. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you, audience, for being on, on this webinar. Um, I hope you'll get great value out of it. Uh, John, Michael, and I are all members of the Convention Industry Council's APEX Standards Committee and its work group, the Bandwidth and Connectivity Work Group. Um, in March of 2012, we were sitting in a meeting and uh, John, being our, our great technical expert, started talking and we all looked at him like he had just stepped off Mars. And uh, we decided that there was so much about this whole topic that none of us understood. 
Um, and we had been in the industry for uh, collectively way too many years than we're going to uh, account for, that we too uh, needed to learn more about it, uh, set out on a journey to do just that, and now we present that to you. So Michael, if you could talk about our learner outcomes, that would be super. Michael? Hello? Hey, why don't you take that one? I'll take the next. Okay. Um, just very briefly, you can see the learner outcomes. Um, we, I, I pretty much alluded to these things. Uh, both suppliers and planners really need to know uh, how to discuss this topic intelligently uh, so that we all know what it is exactly that we're going to be talking about. And uh, as you'll see as we progress through this, that uh, we're going to give you uh, lots of tools and information to do just that. So um, John, if um, Terry, we're going to need some technical help here. My screen is not moving. There, oops, sorry. OK, so. Oh, go ahead. There you go. There we go. Oh. No. That's Terry, I will move the screen, please. Thank there you. There you go. Okay, so here's the definition that we put together for bandwidth, which is uh, going to be in the APEX glossary when that's re-released. Again, uh, just to reiterate, the amount of data that can be transmitted, either upload or receive, download per second. So I think it's important that everybody understand what we're talking about when we talk about bandwidth. Amen. And most importantly, uh, what we are going to do is, as a committee, we will meet next month. And this plus other terms, and I think they're around 61, John? Yeah, we're, we're narrowing that down to fewer than 61 at this point. Oh, good. So what, whatever that, that number is going to be, then we will uh, present that to our our committee for approval, it will then go up to CIC, and it will, uh, within a short amount of time, be put, placed on the website uh, for you to uh, talk about. Uh, Michael, are you back with us? I am here. Can you hear me? I there you can. Go. How, how about if you take I, the bandwidth planning slide, Michael? Sure. Um, there are a number of constituencies when you're talking about bandwidth. I defaulted in the first conversation to content management, because that's the, the business I'm in, delivery from the stage. But of course, that's clearly that's your presenters. Uh, you have also uh, your exhibitors, and I can tell you stories forever about uh, trade show floors where we've had issues with uh, the expectations on, on Wi-Fi, and show management wherein you're drawing um, uh, you may be taking credit cards, you're doing, you're managing business. The, 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 one of the main things that we need to talk about is attendee expectations, which have changed dramatically over the last uh, few years. The iPhone is, uh, was 2007. The Android was 2008. The iPad is barely three years old, maybe three years, four months now. And so what we have is different usage, and we have everybody in the room not everybody, but a huge uh, a portion of the, of the people in the room who are also using bandwidth. So when you're planning for the required uh, internet access, you need to take all of these subjects into consideration, all of the uh, consumers of uh, bandwidth that are, may be in there, your presenters, your exhibitors, your show management, and your attendees. So Michael, why don't you continue so we catch you up and we get back on track? Tell us why sure. um, why HSIS A fails. Well, one in, inadequate bandwidth into the facility, which is uh, which we have. Um, not only that, but it's inadequate Wi-Fi infrastructure. Now, what does that mean? Inadequate Wi-Fi infrastructure means, for instance, there may be plenty of bandwidth into the room, but if the access points within the room are either of an older generation and not carrying the capacity or there are not enough of them, then you're going to have another bad experience. Wi-Fi interference, for instance. At a recent uh, conference, I had a, a, a very experienced planner tell, uh, or exhibitor tell me that, ask, in other words, that if, uh, if their Wi-Fi was being blocked, 
The answer was no. She said, I don't understand because it was operating 30 minutes ago. Well, 30 minutes ago, there weren't other 10 other MiFi devices operating. And when you turn on a MiFi, which is operated over a cellular system, it interferes with the Wi-Fi. So we can get in, but it gets a bit confusing when you begin talking about all these acronyms and everything. But the truth is, there's all sorts of interference. If you're running from a separate system on, on cellular, that interferes with the internal house uh, information. External factors, who's using it? Is it shared internet? Is it dedicated internet? If it's dedicated, for instance, if you're in the hallway of a conference uh, center or a convention center, uh, that is shared access. And we all know what happens when everybody comes out in the hallways and it slows down. The main factor clearly is the lack of planning for all of these things. We don't know. As a planner, you know your food and beverage pickup. You know your room pickup, your attrition, all those sorts of things. Uh, your transportation manifests, all of these things. But we don't clearly have a, have a deep enough discussion about high-speed Internet access. And that's our, goal. our objective is to equip everybody to have that conversation. So, John, why don't you talk about the demand and, um, and in that tell us uh, about a video that we cannot show for obvious reasons on a webinar. And um, I don't want to make our participants cringe, but I know it will when you tell them what happened. Yeah, the, the video that we normally show in our presentation is a video of Steve Jobs um, at one of his conferences. And he was trying to get through the Internet through his smartphone and do a presentation. However, he did not have the wireless access. And what they, it was kind of an embarrassing moment where the screen kept popping up and uh, it, he could not access um, what he was trying to do. So basically, they found out after some research uh, during the event that there were 630 individual MiFi devices in operation in the venue. It was basically blocking the internet signal, the wireless signal in the, uh, the venue. So he actually had to request everybody to turn off their MiFi devices so that he could continue on with his presentation. Um, the video is it's, it's kind of funny, but if, if you know how Steve Jobs is, I'm sure some people might have lost their jobs over that. Um, and that could have easily been avoided had they understood the audience and the fact that people in the audience were going to be blogging about the experience. And if, um, if Apple had just decided to provide free Internet access for all of the attendees in the conference space, in that meeting space, they wouldn't have had to use their MiFi devices. So again, it's, it's important to know, you know not only the number of participants, but what is the expected use of the Internet? Who, who, who's going to be there? I think it would be low, medium, or high users. And then the number and types of devices in use. I mean, most of us now travel with three devices. And you have to understand that you're going to be connecting three devices. So it, it does sap the, um, the network when you talk about wireless access points. Wireless access points have a certain a finite number of devices that can connect to a wireless access point. So that goes back to the network infrastructure that Michael was talking about. Those are all things that you need to consider when, when planning the meeting. So when you're talking about presenter requirements, it's just like any other factor involved in speaker management, which I'm sure many in our audience are, are charged with doing. Uh, you just have to add a few more things to your checklist on what your presenter needs, because now there is an expectation that they're all going to have access to internet. Are they doing videos? Are they doing demos? What is it they're doing and how much bandwidth is, is, uh, is any one of your speakers going to require? Is there going to be more required out of keynote speakers, for instance? So as you start developing your checklist of things that you need to know for your presenters, uh, you have to know what your, your expectations of the audience are, but also you need to know um, expectations of your presenters. And along with that, you're also going to have to talk about uh, what type of bandwidth that you're going to require. And I'm going to turn this over to Michael for that. Well, clearly, I mentioned earlier shared versus dedicated bandwidth. Uh, an example of shared bandwidth is, is the speed that you get at Starbucks or in the hallways of a convention center. And it's fine for casual use. Casual use defined as 
grabbing your email, uh, maybe some light surfing, that sort of thing, web surfing, but it's it's not enough. If you've ever had the experience that at uh, Starbucks or, or or if you've ever had an experience in your hotel room with basic free internet, you know that you can't do much beyond just general uh, uh, level of of uh, internet access. Dedicated service ups that uh, and, and enables you have to have enough power for presenters, for critical event needs, and for large events. What are crit critical event needs? I think that has changed. I think it was natural for us two years ago when we began talking about this to think about content delivery as a critical uh, event need, and it is. What we didn't think about were the number of devices in the audience, and now you have web apps. Uh, we have, have heard stories of groups that came in and spent a ton of money designing web apps, got to the program, and didn't realize that they either had not bought internet access for their meeting room, thus the web app wouldn't work within the room, or they had negotiated for free internet and it didn't have the capacity to operate the app. So you need to consider all of these subjects when you look at uh, whether or not shared access is enough. Uh, you know, our point is always, depending on who your audience is, it's about knowing your audience, maybe it is. Maybe all your audience is going to do is check their email or swing through Facebook real quickly or something like that. And it might be okay, but if you've got any kind of, of, of modern user, you probably need to look at a dedicated service. Okay, John. And, and what what should be shared and dedicated? It, it still kind of goes along with what Michael was just talking about. You just have to understand what your what your um, client's needs are, and make sure that if it's event critical, that you're making sure you set aside dedicated bandwidth for those event critical apps. Um, I think there's enough, it's enough said on that, Marianne. I think so, and and you know, as planners, um, I think what you need to understand too is that you yourself can be testing this. Um, there are two uh, links that you are seeing on your screen. Uh, we just tend to use the first one, I guess, because we're lazy or something. But um, it works really well, and if you can test it yourself, you can get an estimate of what is happening. Uh, for the planner who goes in and does a site inspection, um, they may get a test that's really high and, and they may think, oh, great, that's all we need, we can go with the free. But remember, you're one person. As everyone keeps getting added onto that, um, that same bandwidth, then it's going to bog down. So really make sure that you know what you're doing. And as far as usage reports, you must ask for usage reports. And in order to get valuable usage reports, you must make that as part of your initial contract, or your provider will not be able to give you the kind of data that you are act you actually not only want but you need. Another. Oh, well, Marion, they might also find that in the um, pre-planning process that they find the venue is not able to provide that, and that's important to know as well. Yes. Yes, absolutely, it. John. Absolutely. So. Um, I think the important thing, Marianne, is we don't we don't have a baseline. We have not established a baseline. So how do you establish a baseline? If you have information, if you go back to what you were talking about, is get a post event report where you uh, a report of what your usage was. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, introducing the new bandwidth estimator that that has been developed with, by PSAV and that we we're they very generously allowed us to use and is available at the APEX site. You can plug in the number of users you have, the level of users, low, medium, or high, and whether or not they have multiple, multiple devices. And this will give you a, a baseline. It may not be the perfect, but it will at least establish a place where you can go and say, okay, this is what we estimate we're going to need. Um, interestingly, with all this discussion and the awareness that has come to me through these discussions about bandwidth and high-speed internet access, for the first time this spring, I registered for a conference, and in the conference registration, it said, do you own a smartphone and will you be using it on site? Do you own a, a tablet and will you be using it on site? Do you own a laptop? And when we got to that program, it actually had the best service I've ever seen. They even brought in extra access points and put them on the little tower 
uh, that you have, that sort of thing. So knowing what you have, this is a terrific beginning. It's not the end all be all, but it's a great place to start to say, to give you an idea of what you have while you're gathering real data from, the, from your existing programs. Yes, and, and John, um, that bandwidth estimator is currently uh, t maxes out at 1,000. I understand uh, that you're working on getting that beyond. Uh, yeah, we've enlisted the help of some large, some large venues, convention centers, and, and people like that to try to sort some of the data that they have. It's a bigger project than we thought, but yes, we, we do want to eventually be able to expand that so that if you're planning a large uh, convention at a big convention center, uh, you'll be able to use the bandwidth estimator down the road for that as well. Okay. So uh, we are pretty much running down to uh, being out of time uh, if we want to allow for, for Q&A. Uh, can you quickly tell us about um, exhibitor hotspots and, and what yeah, that effect can be, John? You just have to be conscious of the fact that if you have an event where you have a lot of people that are bringing their own MiFi devices, that it can interfere with the network. Uh, we've had situations where the network has been shut down because of the, the uh, preponderance of internet or MiFi devices. It's just something that you need to be aware of and how, how you manage that is something that uh, it's, it's a much longer discussion than we can have right now. Um, yeah. so Mary, I, don't, I guess I can't go into great detail right now on that. Happy to answer any questions about it later, though. Perfect. And, and ditto for the site inspection and evaluation. One of the things that the Standards Committee is doing is uh, rather than doing templates for um, APEX as we used to do, we're trying to do more bulleted talking points for the planners and the suppliers so that they're able to look at the things, ask questions, and get the answers that they absolutely need. And what you see on your screen here are uh, some basic questions that you absolutely must have. And one of the key points here um, is that you need to have your own expert. You need to have that person who's on your side. Just as if you're doing a very extensive contract, um, the supplier has their counsel, and you should have your uh, attorney as well. Um, ditto for technology. You really need to have somebody on your side uh, to get that information that you need to make sure that ultimately the attendee experiences what they came to experience and uh, the, the conference or event will uh, be judged as a very successful one. One of the key questions I think that we are finding um, as we make this presentation uh, around the country is everyone wants to know about pricing. Um, Michael, could you very briefly talk about pricing? Yeah, and pricing at, at this point is kind of the Wild West. It's kind of all over the place. I think it, you know, I think uh, what you'll see down the line is um, scalable pricing. It's a pr the type of pricing that you deal with in your home. If you have cable in your home, you're able to buy different levels. Now when you're going into hotels, I don't know if you see this, but when you check in, you sometimes if you have a, an affinity program with the hotel or a, a frequent uh, sleeper program with the hotel, you will get free Internet. It's a basic level. You can pay X for the next and X for the next if you want to do more than just check your email. In the convention centers you're seeing, they're offering free internet, but what they're offering is free shared internet in the hallway, so you need to look at those types of things. Pricing is, is a question that I think is going to have to be addressed across the, in, the, the, uh, the industry of, of, of what is the best way to approach this. I think the first thing that you need to know is your uh, required capacity. If you know that, you have a little bit more leverage to talk about how are we going to price this, whether it's one hard cost or whether it's scalable at X, Y, or Z. And, and I believe that uh, what we're talking overall and the recommendation is that rather than pricing uh, by a connection, uh, the recommendation, uh, John, is by bandwidth. Is that correct? Well, that's the direction that we're headed because we feel that people could understand they're consuming a certain amount of a product, they understand that there's a price for it, and it's easier to negotiate pricing if you understand what it is you're consuming. And then, John, uh, also, um, you want to yeah, give us a little brief yeah, overview it's, it's, of the event apps? Important. Yeah, they're thinking about event apps and the amount of bandwidth that event apps can suck up. 
So you have to understand what does the, what does the app do? Uh, is it providing basic information? You know, the social media. Are you streaming? So the more you understand about the app and and how much bandwidth it's going to take, the better off you can plan so that your attendees have a good app experience. Um, and again, this goes back to uh, how many devices are going to be in use, and that goes back to the question of how many wireless access points are there, and can they actually handle what you're trying to do? And it's very important. It's, it's, these are easy questions that you can ask a venue about the wireless access points. You can ask them about what technology version they're on, how many users per access point, what's the saturation of access points within the venue. These are all questions that they should be able to answer. And if they can't answer them, they need to find out the answers for you. And then I think the overall question that all of us are asking is, um, is you know, why not free? And if Terry could advance the slide for me, that would be appreciated. Um, rising costs. Um, you know, we don't we don't question the fact that uh, hotel costs for labor go up. Uh, that they need housekeeping staff, they need banquet staff, they need all of these things. Well, if you can imagine the infrastructure costs that go into um, convention centers and any sort of facility, um, these are the kinds of things that are being uh, dealt with right now. And imagine trying to uh, update the infrastructure, having it almost be outdated by the time that you put it into play, and then um, trying to just keep it constantly moving forward. Um, there are costs to it. So my suggestion uh, to planners out there who are talking about um, we'd love to get it free, and of course we all know the attendees ask that question, is do what you do for anything else. Factor it into your budget. Incorporate it so for them that it is free, but uh, through sponsorship, through other techniques, um, go ahead and make it free for them even though we all know that there's a cost involved. And ditto for the venues. Um, you know, they, they try to be partners with the planners, and there are these uh, items that they, too, can um, help with. Um, Michael, would you talk very briefly about what we're doing with RFPs? Um, I think it's important that the conversation uh, clearly, as we said several times, needs to move beyond uh, free and that your RFP as relating to your high speed internet access needs to be as thorough and detailed as for all the other services that you may need in transportation, hotels, food and beverage, everything. So for the information, uh, clearly you need to provide the profile of the meeting, what the, the number of attendees, the number of devices expected for the attendees. Um, those things that you can calculate, again, with the bandwidth estimator. Prior event reporting is extraordinarily important. We're asked all the time when we do these sessions, well, geez, I don't have that information. Uh, what, how can I go back? Well, you probably can't, but today is a good time to start. So be, be able to report that information so that you can, you can go to them with just the same way that you go with the last meetings, food and beverage, et cetera. Uh, the venue needs to provide what Wi-Fi and bandwidth, what generation of the equipment is, to John's point. Um, the access points, we won't get too deep into the technology of the access points, but are the access, access points the current generation, they have more capacity. Um, and, and your support and access uh, method. Whose throat are you going to choke? That's my term, by the way. If, <laughs> if you're not getting what you expect. And so I, I think that if we can equip all sides of our industry, and that is the planner community, the hotelier community, the venue community, the, the uh, independent meeting planner, to have the conversation, it really isn't rocket science. It's just about being as detailed with this new technology. And again, it's just, I mean, it, it, I, the iPhone is seven years old. So it's such a new technology, it's going to be changing. That's the thing that we're discovering. Every session we do, we learn something new that we can incorporate into the next session. Have the conversation. Address high-speed internet access with the same kind of due diligence that you would any of the other elements of your meeting, and, and you'll be fine. You can budget accordingly, and you'll, you'll be, uh, meet your attendee expectations, and everything. everybody will be happy. Okay, John, would you talk post, just briefly yes. about the post-event, please? 
Yeah, you, you definitely want to find out what went well and what didn't, and then uh, you probably ought to be surveying your attendees to find out what their experience was like. But more, you know, I think the important key moving forward is, is going to be getting the wireless device utilization and the bandwidth usage. And again, those are reports that you know more and more venues are realizing are going to be important to the meeting planners, and some of them are scrambling to try to figure out how they can get this reporting accomplished. But I think it's very important for you to have that information, especially for planning your next meeting and understanding the requirements moving forward. And I think uh, just as to close this piece out, that um, our, our standards committee is also working on the post-event report. If any of you have used the APEX templates, you know they're like 27 pages long. And we're trying to get them down to about two and uh, get them down to things that are very relevant. So when, when we start doing uh, recommendations for your your post student report and for other documents um, we will uh, make them in a way that you can certainly customize them so that they are uh, truly your own work so you know keep looking at the CIC website and uh, keep looking for new changes and tools as as we move forward with that Terry I am going to turn it back to you uh, for any questions the audience might have Okay, great. Thank you all. You know, I have to say, Marianne, um, Michael, and John, I take my hat off to you for even attempting to cover this subject in a half an hour, but I think you did a really great job of maybe not answering every question, obviously, that, that folks may have, but at least letting them be aware of what the questions are they need to ask. And I think you made such great points about starting the conversation and managing your um, high-speed internet access in the same way that you would manage your food and beverage or your audiovisual needs or you know your meeting room attendee needs so all of that is is so pertinent as we um, Cherry just just do know for your audience that um, we are available uh, via email for for questions as well uh, we do know it's very complicated and hard to present in 30 minutes, but uh, we have done our speed dating as fast as we could. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and and I want to point out that um, you know empowerment. We are the um, planning branch of DMAI, which is the Trade Association for Convention and Visitors Bureaus, and it's a great start to reach out to any of your um, destination experts to help connect you to the right people in the destination to um, guide you to these discussions. And um, I want to just do a little uh, end housekeeping, then uh, get to our questions. So if you have questions, type them in now. And Joy and Elaine will be um, managing those. But you will uh, receive your CMP credit through CIC for this. Um, webinar today. Thank you very much. And we will be sending you an email in about five business days that will not only give you a link to this recording, but also give you proof of your participation. So look for that um, next week in your inbox. And uh, I would like to thank Craig Deal, who is with um, ePro, and I'm just going to unmute Craig real quickly as Elaine and Joy are getting our questions together. And Craig, I'm sure you had a lot of interest in this topic as you want folks to be able to utilize the apps that um, they get through ePro. So um, Craig, hello, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Uh, first, just thanks to GMA and Empowerment for the opportunity to sponsor today's webinar. It's free what you need. And also to the panelists with John, Mary Ann, and Michael. Just so everybody knows, the ePro Meeting Apps is an industry-leading leader in the meeting apps, developing apps that are geared for the meetings and the events. Uh, we weren't making the Angry Bird knockoff prior to this. Our entire staff has roots in the hospitality industry. I myself have also have an 18-year career working in the hotels, which helped me to develop a vast amount of knowledge about planners and their events and their type of objectives that they're looking to meet throughout their conference. Our, our service is truly hospitality grade. We won't be dealing with anybody that's going to speak Greek and tech, but an industry professional that's going to speak meeting. We developed the custom 
cross-platform apps that are for the iPhone, iPad, as, as well as the Android, BlackBerry, and also Windows Mobile for those that are still utilizing those devices today. All under one low price, and these, this app that we developed is also native. So as we were speaking earlier in regards to uh, bandwidth and uh, high-speed internet access, 95% of usage of our mobile apps are utilized from a native aspect where you would not need to utilize any data plan or Wi-Fi service only for those that are looking to do the social media streaming as well as any hyperlinks or uh, any additional content that the planners provide for their attendees. In addition to our apps, we also are able to provide planners with a metric metrics report that also provides data usage as well as pages viewed for the planners to be able to help identify just what is being utilized within the app during their conference and it also allows the ability to provide feedback for the sponsors or exhibitors that may be providing uh, sponsorship towards the application as well and it gives them a, a chance to see just how well of an ROI that they're receiving. Well, and then also some planners seem that the app is a lot of work. We take out all the homework by providing the pre-written marketing materials for the group attendees as well as any pre-written materials needed to help sell and uh, provide information for exhibitors and sponsors. So now moving forward as you look at potentially utilizing mobile app for your upcoming events, when you go with ePro you have a partner that understands what's important to the planners and the attendees. I just want to thank everybody for their time today. And when it comes time to investigate an app, just please keep us in mind. And Terry, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Craig. And uh, I will now go back. Um, thank you for talking to us and also um, for your sponsorship as well each month. But Marianne, I know that we do have quite a few questions. So um, we're going to let Joy and Elaine field those to you. But I'm going to go back here and put up your names again as well as your email addresses so that as we're answering these questions, um, everyone can also see your contact information. So Joy or Elaine, would you like to field some questions for our panelists? Yeah. Hi, Terry. This is Elaine. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Perfectly. Okay, great. Great, and, and again, thanks. And I would say that a lot of the questions that were coming in, so we put a note is you will receive and can receive a copy of this PowerPoint. And there, this has been recorded, as Terry mentioned, so people can listen in the future. And you'll receive information on all of that, because there were a lot of specific questions, but there was a lot of interest. OK, so um, just to qu clarify, yeah. uh, next week, early next week, or by the end of this week, or at the latest early next week, you will get a link to the recording as well as a link to the PowerPoint deck. Perfect. OK. So let's now we have some very specific questions. So we're ready for those? Yes, we are. And then we can decide as panelists who would like to take them. I'll let you know. So our first was, if average attendance covers three devices and using it at one point or another, how much bandwidth is needed and appropriate to make it efficient? So there are some very specific questions like this if we're going to want to address them. Yeah, again, if, if somebody was to try to utilize the bandwidth estimator on the CIC website, okay. they could type in the, the number of attendees, the, the type of usage they expect from those attendees, low, medium, or high, and click one of those. And then if they know that multiple devices will be in use, then they can click on that as well. And that will give you a rough estimate of the bandwidth requirements for that group. Now, again, it's a, it's a rough estimate. Uh, We've compiled a lot of data over the last few years, so it's it's fairly accurate. But it's a good starting point for somebody to have a conversation with a venue with that information. So you know, I would recommend that people go on the website and and utilize it and you know type in some information. And if they have any bandwidth usage reports from any of their prior meetings, you know, see how close it tracks to to what their experience has been. And you know, if somebody has any specific questions about it that they want to ask me to shoot me an email, I'd be happy to give you a call and follow up. But of course, that was John Rissy. Um, yes, I'm sorry, it's John Rissy. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, and and I'm just going to add to that that uh, John said, you know, look at your previous usage reports. Equally important, if you do not have those usage reports, now is the time to begin moving forward. Um, you're going to need that historical data. 
and, and that's a great segue into there were a few questions that could be consolidated into that type of um, point, Marianna. Is it typical for the providers to charge for those reports? And then in addition to that, do hotels have the capability, I guess it would depend, of course, to provide a planner information on how much bandwidth a group may have used and perhaps at specific times? It's like any other part of a contract. Uh, you have your concessions that you want, you have your specifics that you want, so at the time you are contracting, um, you are going to ask for all of the things that you need. Um, you certainly don't want to go into a venue uh, if they cannot provide you with the type of thing that you need. Or as John likes to tell us, well, you can always, going to, you, you can always get it from an outside provider, but it's going to cost. So um, the time to begin that conversation is at the time you can contract with um, a facility for um, your meeting or event. To their point, if you've already contracted with a facility, consider doing an addendum to that contract uh, because nobody knows what technology is going to look like three years from now, five years from now. Consider using a flexibility clause, just like you might uh, for a room attrition where you want a review period. Consider doing those things for technology as well, because we can't tell you. I don't think there's a person on this, this, this webinar today that can say for positive what technology will look like five years from now, or five minutes. Such a good Great. point. Um, I'm seeing there are a lot of questions, I have to say. So I'm also kind of noticing that people are asking when they do get comfortable with using the calculator, um, is, is, that going to, is there going to be a way to help them with the language? So there's kind of that language. Is that also going to help them explain now how do they turn around with what they have and use that language to communicate to the AV person they're dealing with? Are there some standard languages with that? Yeah. yeah, this is Michael. I think one of the first steps is, is what we're working on amongst the APEX group is to create the glossary so that we're all singing from the same hymnal. Uh, and that would be step one. The second thing that came up a couple of times in our presentation, I, I would suggest this to anybody, is to have what uh, my friend at P PSAB, Matt Harvey, term terms a trusted advisor. Um, I mean, generally you do for any of the technology, the production, and those types of things that you have. I would suggest that you need to have a working knowledge, and that's all we hope to provide through the um, glossary of what these terms mean and how they go. But you don't need to be a full-on geek. You need to have a full-on geek. So that would be my suggestion to you: is, is that that uh, be watching the site. I think that I think you're going to see this. It's going to be an ongoing and changing conversation as we go forward because of the rate of change in the technology um, and. Uh, um, so look for that glossary, uh, and also uh, be thinking about someone that you trust who does speak that language, who can, mm -hmm. can, can give you good advice, who works for you. That's great. And while you were speaking, I took everyone to conventionindustry.org. Under the tab, Standards and Practices, that's where you see the APEX tab. And then under the APEX tab, you see in the drop-down box here, new internet access and bandwidth. And so here is all of the information on your resources. And there's some great articles that have been written recently that are posted there as well. Right. So uh, here's all the, a lot of good information. Right. So okay. here's all of the um, articles as well as the link to the estimator. Say, yeah, and, and I think it's important to. Go ahead, Sorry. go ahead, Michael. I, I think go it's ahead. important to realize that it, it, is that we hope to be a uh, an aggregator, a harvester of good information, no matter where it comes from. I mean, the the actual session, this stuff has been developed by the uh, Bandwidth and Connectivity Task Force of Apex. We are trying to drive the conversation, but we realize there are other people who have good. So, where if we can find a, a good uh, video interview, a good article, and that sort of thing. We're going to try to provide links as we have them. If you see them and want to send a recommendation, please do. If you see something that's helpful in this direction, please let us know. 
And Terry, um, since you do have so many questions left, mm -hmm. um, and with the consent of, of John and Michael, if you would send those to us, um, we could answer those questions, and then you could get them out to you, your entire audience, because we are about closing in on the 60-minute mark. That would be fine. So what we can do then is, um, you know, we can, the questions that we didn't get answered, you know, we can kind of send a, we'll, we'll try to group general questions together um, and have great. you, yeah, and have you answer a question, you know, we'll have a question page. But again, I would just like to go back to referring them to the CIC website. And then if you have a really detailed question, one that is not, um, you know, more general to the general audience, you see um, the three email addresses here to go direct to either Marianne, Michael, or John. So I think you were right about uh, staying on because we've had over 90% of our audience stay with us through this extended, um, you know, question and, and talk time. So that certainly speaks to how important these issues are and, you know, kind of how much pent-up demand there is for this really great information. And, and on behalf of the industry, Marianne, Michael, and John, we would certainly like to thank you for spearheading and the great work you have done as part of the Review Council to, to get us a little bit closer to up to speed with what's happening. And Terry, thank you on behalf of all of us for the privilege of being able to present to so many people at one time. Um, it, it makes us feel good that we're able to, to get that message out. Yeah, and I think also everyone that uh, participated online, again, getting that link to the recording, uh, you can pass this recording on to your staff. Um, you can um, pass on the uh, CIC information to all those, um, maybe your peers or even in the industry groups that you work with um, so that we can just, you know, move pass it forward. Thank you. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day. And uh, we look forward to um, seeing you next month. And uh, next month, our webinar will be uh, about working with multiple partners to make sure that you uh, maximize your efforts as you move from destination to destination. So everyone, have a great day. And again, Marianne, Michael, and John, we thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.